Shalom, brothers and sisters. So I have, I make it a point to be very connected and hands-on in the comments because I do note that a lot of people don't do this on channels and, and I'm here for you and with you and we're watching together. So I like to keep my finger on the pulse and, and respond as much as I can and at least let you know that I've seen your comments. Um, it's important to me because we're here together. We're serving the Lord together. We're running this race together. Now, in the recent comments, I've seen quite a few questions pop up in a regular spate of the last 24 hours. How do we pray for Israel? How do we pray for the peace of Jerusalem? It's, it's a confusing issue for a lot of people. So I'm going to touch on the basics, on what I want you to understand around that. And it won't be long. It's really short. And hopefully this helps you to, to get a better grip on when I say pray for the peace of Jerusalem and pray for Israel, pray for the Jews, then hopefully this helps. So let's first look at the Bible's commands. So John 14 verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. We love him. We keep his word. We follow his ordinances we seek his face. We read through the word of God consistently and all the time. And we will keep his word. So that's John 14, 23. Luke 11, verse 28. Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and do it. We unfortunately get a lot of people call themselves Christians or believers that hear the word of God but cast it aside and don't do it because it's too difficult. It requires too much. It takes too much of a step towards the light and they're comfortable where they are in the shade. Psalm 122 verse 6. Now this is where it comes from. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Now we've covered this before and, and dug into this a bit more about the meanings around those words. And I can dig into it again and, and explain it again in another video. But it's, it's may you be at peace and calm and at rest who love Israel, who love Jerusalem. All right. It's a command. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122 verse 4 to 5. And this is important. Behold. Behold, like get your attention. Behold, he who keeps Israel, keeps, not kept, keeps Israel, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. God does not make a decision today and throw it away tomorrow. He is not fickle like mankind. When he has made a covenant and a promise with the people, it is forever. He keeps, keeps to his side always because he is God. Otherwise, he wouldn't be God. If we go into Romans 11 from verse 25 onwards, it will give you a lot more explanation too. So from verse 25, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written. So there is a blindness on Israel in part. There are still Jews meeting their Messiah and becoming Messianic Jews and turning to him. Amir Sarfati is one example. I know many others. I've got brothers and sisters in Israel that I know as well that have turned to him. Amazing people of God that are living under extreme tension with their brothers and sisters that are Jews that are anti-Jesus. It is written the deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. They fight against it. They push against it. They hate Christianity and Jesus more than anything else. When a Jew finishes his military service, that was even back then when I was in Israel, they take a few gap years, a few, not one or two. 
They can go anywhere. They can go become Buddhists. They can go, they can even turn to any religion they want. They can become New Age, Satanist, anything. And they'll be accepted back into their Jewish society. Everybody will be fine with them. They're just a bit weird. But if they come back speaking about Jesus Christ, Yeshua, they will be written off as if they are dead. They will have a funeral for them and you will no longer exist. That is the level of enemy that they are against you and the gospel at this stage. But the verse continues concerning the election. They are beloved for the sake of the fathers promises made that are eternal for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience, even so, these also have now been disobedient, that through the mercy shown you, they also may obtain mercy. For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. There is a time frame until the fullness of the Gentiles. He has not forgotten Israel. He still keeps Israel. He doesn't slumber, nor does he sleep. And he is going to turn his full attention to them in Daniel's 70th week. And their eyes will flip open. They will be open to God again. And a remnant will be brought through the fire and back to his side. This is coming. We pray for them. So again, Pastor, how do we pray? Number one. We pray for the salvation of the Jews, the Prince of Peace, to open their eyes and their hearts to himself. Hence, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. When I pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the peace of Israel, we are praying for them to meet the ultimate peacemaker, Yeshua HaMashiach, that they will turn to him and meet the Prince of Peace. We pray for the peace of of Jerusalem, knowing that soon the Lord will return for a final time in seven years' time and rule and reign from there. And it will truly be the city of peace for a thousand years and then forevermore. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're praying to hastening this entire program. That gets them to where they need to be, to a safe place, a remnant bought, sold, owned by God, safe in the city of peace in Jerusalem. We're praying for that peace of Jerusalem. We intercede for them as Yeshua intercedes for us all the time. They are family, like we have family now amongst ourselves that are unbelievers. We still love them. We still pray for them. Even when they're godless and ungodly and doing abominable things, we still pray for them. Even though they mock and laugh, we still pray for them because we love them. They are family. They need their eyes open. That is the same way you look at the Jews and you look at Israel. They are family. We are grafted in. The root is God. We are grafted into that tree where the branches were broken off. We still pray for those branches because we know that they will come through this time that's ahead and an elect will be saved, purified and brought back. An interesting thing as well to, to bear note of is that when Israel was established, May 14th, 1948, guess how many Messianic Jewish believers there were in the land? Believers that were completely Jewish that believed in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. 23. The number 23. And we're in 2023. It's not lost on me on how significant that is. 23 believers, May 14, 1948. Now, the adult Jewish believer in Yeshua in Israel stands at 8,125. That doesn't seem like a lot, or you might think that's a huge increase from 23. But Israel has 6.9 million Jews. That percentage is 0.11% that are saved. Early fix. We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel. May they prosper 
who bless you and love you. We love them. We bless them. We pray that they meet Yeshua, that more ripe figs will be ready to go in this rapture as soon as it takes place. God bless. I hope this helps. Scream if it doesn't, and I'll go into more in-depth for you. Lots of love. Keep looking up. Shalom.